Right, I'm just uh, going to plant some three rows of potatoes here, some first early potatoes, and I'm just forking it over to loosen it up a bit because it's got quite set quite hard since I dug it over the winter. So I'm digging it over and taking the opportunity to get off any, there's lots of uh, bits of dandelion uh, root, which if you leave that, it will grow. So the, the, the thing is to get that off as you dig it over. Right, so now I've worked this over ready for potatoes. I'm just gonna put a bit of uh, fertilizer on the top because although I dug, dug some muck in and I dug it over the uh, winter, that's quite deep down. So I'll put some on the surface just to get the potatoes going. I've, uh, I've dug a trench here for uh, to plant the potatoes in about 15 centimetres deep and the potatoes need planting between 45 to 70 centimetres apart although maybe a little bit closer indeed with these because these are first earlies and I hope to get harvest these quite early on um, and the closer you plant them together the, the, the smaller the, the things the um, potatoes you harvest are but that doesn't really matter with first earlies so I'm going to plant these 30 to 45 centimetres apart um, obviously plant them with the sprouts facing upwards and then the one covering with soil and we'll, we'll heap it up a little bit of soil on the top so you've got a little bit of a mound so you know where the row is. Because it's quite dry as well it's not a bad idea to, uh, to water the tubers in once you've, uh, you've got them in the hole. Just give them a dose of uh, some sprinkling of water before you bury them. Help them start off all right. Right, so I've got my two rows of potatoes in and heaped a bit of soil back on the top of them. Um, there'll be a while before they come out with them potatoes they appear even above the soil and, and then even long before they get enough foliage on to sort of what they call meeting the rows so that they could you know join the ones off this row meeting the ones off that row but that means that you can make use of the space between the rows for something called a catch crop basically it's something that you sow and it grows that quick and you harvest it long before the potatoes have met in the row enough to um, shade it out so what I'm going to do is plant some radishes some spring onions and some little gem lettuce and that should we'll be ready to harvest long before the potatoes cause any problems with it. So you're making full use of the land that you've got or the space that you've got. If you haven't got room to have potatoes in your garden, you could always plant them in a pot. Now this pot is about 30 centimetres across, so there's about room in here for one potato. If you've got a bigger pot, obviously you could have a couple in there. So you just make a, make a deepy hole in the middle. And again, this is a potato that I've had in the greenhouse chitting. It has started to sprout a little bit, but uh, I would like to be in a bit more of that, but we'll plant it in the pot and see how it goes. So you just don't plant it well, 15 centimetres down, something like that, and then just cover it over with soil and it will come. And of course, again, you could plant the catch crop in here. So you could plant a few radishes and lettuces and spring onions or something in the top of here, or they will grow and you'll be able to harvest them before the potatoes got too big. Farmers are now finishing preparing the land for planting spring crops. Here they are spreading organic manure from animals to make the soil better for crops. Now they are ploughing manure and any remains of the previous crops in. Birds like seagulls often come to eat the insects disturbed by the plough. The land is then worked and broken down into smaller lumps. These lumps are called a till and make a seed bed. Crops like wheat, 
or these peas will then be sown. This machine is a seed drill. The seed drill is placing pea seeds in the ground and then covering them with soil. The tractors will have extra dual wheels or tracks on, so they do not tread the soil down. They may also have sat nav to keep them in straight lines. We will follow these crops through the growing season. Whilst the crops grown in fields are very small or just being planted, some of those grown in greenhouses are already being harvested. One that one's 357 grams. And that's within the limits? That's within the limits, yeah. That was what, we would, what we were aiming for is, is uh, three, 320. You know, and that's 310. That's fine. Catching a cow carving was much more difficult than we had expected, but as our farmer Mr Rook said, although I was a farmer and not afraid of the cows, which they do sense, I am not their farmer, so they are still wary of me and will not necessarily settle and carve when I am about. We turned up several times of day and night to have just missed a calf being born. One time we arrived when a cow had just had one calf, we saw the feet of another calf poking out. Just like this here. She was having twins. By the time we had grabbed our camera, less than a minute, she had had her second calf, so we missed it again. Another time when we turned up, we saw this heifer starting to have her first ever calf. But she was camera shy and did not want to be filmed. So she stood up and turned to face the wall. So again, we missed the actual birth. Here's the heifer's calf, literally a few seconds old.
finally, we did get there just in time to see a calf being born. Mr. Rook quickly steps in to make sure that the calf is okay. Our look had finally changed, as a couple of days later, we caught another cow having a calf. Here you can see the legs and the nose just poking out. And within a few minutes, the whole of the calf comes out. And like all the newborn calves we saw, it was quickly up on its feet and enjoying its first taste of mother's milk. Within a few hours of being born, Mr. Rook must tag the calf and allocate it a passport so that this calf can be traced throughout its life. Mr. Rook also puts iodine on the calf's navel. The navel is how it was attached to its mother when in her womb. Until the navel dries and heals, the calf could also absorb bacteria, the same as it did food in its mother's womb. This could lead to infection and even death for the calf. So just to make sure the end of a year's work is not lost, Mr. Rook also gives the calf an injection of antibiotic to make sure no infection can start. We will come back to see the calves being let out for the first time and then growing up during the summer.